very good evening to all of you, and I'm sorry for the slight delay in beginning. Um, Madame Bukova has had an extremely packed day and has been trying to uh, manage a schedule that is simply wasn't uh, manageable for a non-ordinary mortal, um, and so has run a little bit late. But thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, Madame Irina Bukova, UNESCO Director General, um, friends and colleagues from the media and the UN, thank you all for your time uh, to join us here at this end of mission press conference for the visiting UNESCO Director General. It's been a pleasure to have her in Sri Lanka for her first official visit um, and to affirm UNESCO's support to the peace and reconciliation process, the rich cultural heritage of the country and the advancement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development here in Sri Lanka. As the first woman to lead the organization, Ms. Bukova is a leading advocate for ensuring quality education for all and has championed gender equity, equality, and made her own personal priority that equality. During her visit in Sri Lanka, she's had several high-level meetings to discuss measures to strengthen cooperation, to build a sustainable future for all. Through inclusive quality education, science, technology, and innovation, to preserve and enhance the rich cultural heritage of the country, the promotion of cultural diversity and, the envi and environmental conservation. Sri Lanka has in fact a total of eight heritage sites out of which within the last four days Ms. Bukova has had the pleasure of visiting three, um, but that is only a small part of what she's visited here in the island. I'm happy to host Ms. Bukova uh, at the United Nations compound and host you, the media, as she shares with, her, with us some of the highlights of her visit. Madame Bukova. Uh, thank you very much, Un, uh, and I uh, do apologize uh, once again for the delay. Um, there is not uh, heavy traffic today, it's a holiday, but still it took a bit longer to come from the uh, South Asian Center, Center for Teacher Development at uh, uh, Meepe, I hope I pronounced it uh, correctly. Um, it's uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, for me uh, uh, a pleasure, it's um, a delight to, to be in the country. Uh, for the first official visit, um, a country with which UNESCO has a long-standing uh, cooperation in uh, many of the areas of uh, UNESCO's mandate. You may know that uh, UNESCO is the United Nations Agency for uh, Education, uh, Science, uh, Culture and Communication. And in every each one of uh, these uh, uh, mandates of UNESCO, varied mandates, uh, we have a very strong uh, link. Of course, uh, the most important uh, now uh, in terms of political agenda of the country is the peace process, the reconciliation of the country uh, and everything uh, that is linked to um, overcoming uh, the conflict of the past, of healing the wounds uh, on the basis of uh, respect uh, for human rights, uh, uh, on the basis of respect uh, for diversity and looking forward uh, for the future. So this was uh, uh, one of the main topics of my meetings um, uh, today uh, with the President of the country, uh, previously uh, with the Secretary General of the Reconciliation Commission and in all the interaction with other ministers, the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, yesterday, Minister of uh, Science Technology, Minister of uh, Education uh, and some others. Uh, this was very high uh, on the agenda of our discussion. Uh, from the point of view of, of UNESCO, and I did share uh, also with the country team here and uh, we are working uh, also very closely. We want even to be more involved in this process, uh, mainly through the lens of education, education for human rights, uh, education for peace, uh, uh, working with young people. UNESCO uh, has a very deeply embedded uh, uh, as a responsibility culture for peace, working with young people. Uh, all this uh, for us, uh, of course, is uh, uh, not only within our mandate, we feel this is our responsibility. The other aspect of uh, my visit here, of course, is uh, uh, to uh, support the reform of the uh, education sector, the um, bringing the quality. We know that uh, uh, in terms of uh, the Millennium Development Goals, Sri Lanka has made the big strides, and in terms of uh, uh, literacy, uh, last year uh, we have uh, given 
uh, to the same Institute of Teacher Training our big uh, uh, King Sejong liter Literacy Prize uh, uh, on the International Literacy Day, the 8th of September. Uh, but uh, uh, as the government also knows very well and we are working with them, it's about uh, quality education. Uh, this is where uh, issues like uh, teacher training come, uh, recruitment of teachers, um, retaining teachers, uh, good conditions for teachers uh, uh, work. And um, that is why uh, the decision to put under the auspices of UNESCO this institute, which is a South Asia institute already for teacher training, uh, is, is so important. Uh, it is about uh, uh, recruiting more than 50,000 uh, teachers in the next uh, uh, years, as the minister informed me, and then, of course, uh, training them and all the uh, relevant, um, uh, I would say, conditions uh, for their work. Uh, we did discuss uh, also uh, with the um, Minister of Science and Technology. I participated apart from today's conference on the uh, education. Uh, we did discuss uh, at a um, uh, forum, a uh, scientific forum, uh, yesterday with more than uh, 200 uh, scientists. Uh, the um, ambition of the government, uh, not just to establish a center and science museum, but to move uh, uh, beyond this uh, and to um, achieve uh, high quality of uh, first of high education, something that I discussed also with the uh, Minister of Higher Education in a separate meeting, but uh, to link uh, science, research, and higher education, uh, to look uh, also at uh, the quality assurance. I think one of the big things, uh, one of the big challenges in the country is the quality assurance, and the government is working uh, uh, with the support of the World Bank and also uh, with our support on uh, creating the framework for. Uh, quality assurance uh, uh, and attracting more uh, uh, also private sector into the uh, higher education. Um, science, uh, technology and innovation is a justifiable, uh, a justified ambition. Uh, it is uh, to encourage uh, more scientific research, to link it uh, to the uh, uh, private sector, to establish partnerships, something that I encouraged very strongly uh, the minister uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, uh, from that point of view, uh, I wish uh, to have uh, to see more uh, UNESCO chairs um, in the different universities um, in the country uh, so that we can uh, involve them in our networks, of scientific networks that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, so much uh, developed in, uh, in many parts of uh, the world. And uh, of course, uh, coming to uh, the uh, culture, heritage, uh, uh, I uh, had uh, the pleasure of uh, visiting um, uh, three of the World Heritage Sites in the first uh, two days of my visit. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, Polona Ruro, which is uh, an extraordinary, I would say, uh, a place of uh, uh, ancient uh, uh, mixture of uh, Buddhism and Hinduism and the beautiful uh, uh, temples and the statues uh, uh, with looking uh, at the new archaeological excavations that are uh, being done there and supporting uh, uh, this uh, activity and its uh, inscription, I would say, uh, into the uh, uh, local plans, uh, development plans, using it as an education tool. And overall, I would say, uh, uh, using heritage, we consider that heritage and culture also is one of the very strong instruments of national reconciliation and peace and educating young people uh, in this uh, spirit is uh, uh, something that uh, may very well uh, be inscribed into the national plans of, uh, of reconciliation. Then, of course, uh, we went to uh, Sigiri, admired once again uh, this extraordinary beauty, uh, natural, uh, uh, the beautiful, uh, 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 of course, uh, frescoes on the rock, but also, I would say, the uh, marvel of the engineering and the hydrological thought of those times. Sometimes we forget that uh, we speak only about the pure aesthetic side, but this is uh, about uh, human ingenuity, uh, and it is important to emphasize it because this is one of the reasons, also arguments for its inscription on the World Heritage Site. And of course, Kendi with the temple uh, of sacred, a place uh, uh, which I believe is uh, uh, part of the identity and uh, the history uh, of, uh, of Sri Lanka, it is. Uh, it was a big privilege uh, for me 
uh, also to have access. It's one of the privileges of being a director general of a cultural also organization that you are invited to have access to uh, places where other visitors and tourists uh, do not. So I really feel very privileged, very honored uh, to have been invited also by the priests uh, to have an exchange with them uh, first and then uh, to visit uh, uh, and to admire this sacred uh, place. So um, we did touch uh, with the uh, last but not least, uh, definitely, two more issues. Um, uh, uh, one is linked to uh, gender, to uh, gender equality, to um, empowerment of women in the different areas, mainstreaming, as we say in our uh, United Nations language, uh, uh, mainstreaming uh, uh, gender in uh, all the aspects of uh, being from the point of view of gender violence, uh, gender-based violence or just simply uh, for better access to uh, uh, girls and women to scientific research and uh, or to taking up important political positions. Um, uh, today, uh, during the uh, uh, um, conference uh, that uh, we have held uh, uh, also uh, in the um, uh, Asian Institute for Teachers, um, uh, we had, I, I listened to very interesting presentation analysis uh, by uh, Professor Maitri uh, Vikrigwa Singe, uh, uh, who is uh, uh, also uh, a big advocate um, for gender equality. Before that, uh, we met, we discussed uh, these issues, and uh, uh, I think uh, the, this uh, new chapter, I would say, of research here in different um, uh, universities is something that is uh, very much to be commended and welcome, and uh, we decided to look forward for some opportunities uh, further on uh, to be engaged more closely in, uh, uh, in working uh, together. Uh, and the other side, which uh, also we touched upon uh, today uh, with the president, I uh, commended him uh, for the uh, uh, Freedom of, Exp Freedom of Inform Access to Information Act, uh, uh, which is something uh, from the point of view of UNESCO also extremely important. Um, uh, and uh, working uh, with uh, uh, journalists, uh, freedom of expression, the media development. It's um, uh, something that uh, UNESCO has uh, worked uh, for during the elaboration of the Agenda 2030, the goal number 16, uh, which is about good governance and um, uh, in the um, work on the new constitution, uh, uh, the president reassured me that this will be very strongly part of uh, what they're looking for. So I stop here so that we can uh, go more maybe into the question and answer, but I wanted to outline uh, the main trust of the meeting that I had here this quarter. Uh, so thank you for your attention. So, uh, friends from the media, you can see it has been a rich um, few days, which a rich few days, which covers a huge range of areas and interests to the mandate of UNESCO, which indeed you'll you'll have researched and seen that it's, it's an extremely broad and an extremely generous mandate which allows uh, Madame Bukova and her team to really delve into the interface between culture, heritage, education, the future um, based on science and technology, the future based on peace building and, and making peace in people's minds. Um, and so I think it, it's really been rich and we'd like to open the floor to questions. We'll take one or two and then see how we go. Uh, indeed, I, I didn't have time to visit uh, all the uh, eight sites. Uh, uh, Sri Lanka has so much to offer. Uh, you're right uh, that um, uh, the uh, Golden Temple of uh, Dambulla has been for some time uh, on the attention of the World Heritage uh, Committee uh, attention. Uh, it is uh, because of some challenges uh, with the both uh, construction outside and some of the maintenance, uh, uh, the frescoes and uh, some other. There was last year, in March, uh, as uh, provided for by and requested for by the World Heritage Committee, 
We call it a reactive monitoring mission uh, by experts uh, visiting the site, uh, preparing a report, and um, uh, they have expressed concern about uh, the maintenance. Um, uh, the, uh, the most important now that there is a close dialogue among the government, the authorities, and, uh, uh, and uh, the World Heritage Committee. And uh, we do hope that through this dialogue, uh, on one side, we can support the government of tackling some of these challenges. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, the idea, of course, uh, uh, of uh, UNESCO and uh, the World Heritage Committee, because it's the World Heritage Committee who is uh, reviewing uh, all these uh, uh, issues. Uh, it is not to punish governments, it is to work, it, to work out together with the governments in order to find the best ways uh, for solving uh, such, uh, such issues. So um, we uh, are concerned, uh, the uh, uh, mission was concerned and the World Heritage is concerned, but the, uh, I would say the good side of it is that there is a good dialogue and we hope to find solutions. You mentioned reconciliation. Um, how far have we progressed for reconciliation? And are you satisfied with the progress that we have made in reconciliation? Well, I, I would say, uh, and I'm happy that uh, we are doing this in the UN compound, this conference, and that uh, uh, the resident coordinator is with me here, because I, uh, what uh, uh, I have heard both from the president, from the uh, secretary general of the Reconciliation Commission, and I would say the broad, uh, um, spectrum of, of personalities that I met. I was, uh, I did not mention, but yesterday I was at the uh, University of Kendi the day before yesterday. We stayed with the faculty staff uh, uh, discussing issues including peace and reconciliation. It's very much on the, on the agenda. And uh, um, I was happy also to um, once again listen uh, from the president the uh, commitment uh, of Sri Lanka, of the government to work with the United Nations, the very strong uh, expression of uh, recognition of the role of the United Nations. I think this is uh, something very important uh, in the different uh, areas of uh, this process, because it is a process and there are uh, different areas. Uh, uh, what uh, also I was told uh, in terms of uh, either missing persons or the uh, impunity issue and strengthening the human rights uh, aspect uh, uh, of this. Uh, uh, so from that point of view, uh, I would say that I'm uh, strongly impressed by the political will expressed. Uh, and the fact that they, this is a national unity government uh, uh, with a strong will to go through the process, uh, to look at other examples, uh, to talk to the United Nations, uh, to uh, reach out and to take uh, not just advice but uh, support. Uh, in very many of these areas, I think, uh, uh, is, uh, is something impressive and a very strong sign of political will. Just one more question, if I may. Uh, you also mentioned private sector participation in education and so on. Now, to what extent do you envisage private sector participation in the subjects that you mentioned? Is it a 50 50 understanding, or is it that uh, the state will be more pronounced in their participation? Now, I, this is uh, uh, the uh, issue of uh, education and uh, the role of the private uh, uh, sector in many parts of the world is, uh, is being very, very much debated. Now, from the point of view of UNESCO, let me be very clear. For us, for UNESCO, education is a public good. And it is a responsibility of the governments to ensure education. Uh, we do know that uh, there are different circumstances, but I think Sri Lanka has advanced a lot uh, in the area of education because it has free uh, access to education for the primary and secondary, something that is for the first time inscribed on the goal number four. And we ask other countries to do the same. When I mentioned private, I was talking about higher education. I was talking also the partnership with the private sector. And I will give you an example about technical vocational training, which is an expensive, which needs a lot of uh, investment and a cooperation, I would say, linkages, partnerships between the private sector and the higher education and technical vocational training in terms of to find this fine line 
uh, to overcome the mismatch, what I heard also from the university in Kandy uh, and, and some others and the Minister of Higher Education, of what, what kind of uh, quality education is needed in order to uh, accompany, uh, in order to serve also the quest for economic growth on one side, and of course then for the, uh, those sectors of the economy of uh, science, technology, innovation, just to give one example, where Sri Lanka wants to grow. So I think from that point of view, uh, the cooperation with the private sector is very important. And also not to forget in my view that um, speaking about the implementation of the uh, sustainable development agenda, of course, at the end of the day, it has been adopted by governments in the United Nations setting. But it is not just for governments to implement. It is about everybody, every single uh, member of the society. It's about the civil society, it is about the academia, it is about the private sector. Private sector should take responsibility also for the implementation of this agenda. And I don't believe that uh, we can solve uh, the problems, take it uh, water management, um, uh, um, biodiversity even, uh, uh, quality education of in good uh, in terms of uh, new technologies of uh, access uh, uh, to the reach to reach the uh, unreached uh, or another area which is so close to your hearts here in Sri Lanka I'm speaking about the sustainability of the oceans something I didn't mention but within the portfolio of UNESCO again through our um, intergovernmental oceanographic commission and the science about the oceans in any of these areas private sector should be a partner and should give solutions and should take also responsibility. This is what I mean when I speak partnership with the private sector. Madam, Thank you. Sorry, can we, could we, we had a gentleman with his hand up and someone here and then I, can I come back to you, sir? Yeah, Thank no you. Problem. Okay, you then the gentleman at the back and then, sir, you in this the yellow stripes. Um, I represent News First and Stephanie Well, during a visit you said that Sri Lanka looks committed uh, to reduce global warming, but Sri Lanka also generates most of its power through coal power, it is coal, it's 40% of it. Um, do you still believe that Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan government, looks committed to reduce global warming in this backdrop? I don't remember saying these words, colleagues. Mm -hmm. I, uh, exactly this I cannot say. I didn't say. I but don't know what is in the... Do concern in uh, reducing global warming? Concern this <laughs> one thing. Yeah, the, the <laughs> no, what, what uh, maybe... Uh, uh, I, I haven't said this. Uh, because to be frank, I do not have figures on this uh, particular issue, and that's why I cannot say it. But, but what we have uh, discussed uh, in terms of, uh, of climate change, uh, in terms of science and technology, in terms of... Uh, uh, um, diversifying, creating a green economy. We did discuss this uh, uh, and to look for what are those options and what are the uh, opportunities also for Sri Lanka to diversify its uh, energy sector uh, and to look at uh, uh, creating a green economy. Um, it is not that much uh, this side of, uh, from the point, I speak at the point, uh, point of view of Director General of UNESCO, uh, what, uh, what we are uh, really, uh, I would say, promoting and concerned is uh, uh, to look at uh, the linkages between the green economy, green society. I did say that because uh, unless we uh, create, uh, change the mentality of uh, how we produce, how we consume uh, everything that is in the mindset of people, we will never reach uh, the green economy equally. So there are two sides here. On one side is to invite once again the private sector to take up responsibility uh, for this matter, developing uh, water resources, hydrology, we did discuss that uh, the potential also for more, the better management of water resources in the country uh, is, is big. And this is where uh, we uh, are committed uh, to work uh, through our intergovernmental hydrological program, but also create the capacity. We have an institute of water management uh, in the Netherlands, uh, it's under the auspices of UNESCO, and this is where I invited also the government to be more proactive and to work with us uh, in this area. So, from that point of view, yes, I think there are a lot of things that can be done. Thank you. Gentleman at the back. 
Madam, you mentioned about the, the, the need to uh, improve research and development in the education and also in the archaeological uh, and history and etc. Now, we've seen over the years that the Sri Lanka uh, lacks resources, especially funding, especially in the university level, uh, in terms of uh, training personnel uh, in archaeological, uh, you know, uh, preserving archaeological monuments and etc. Especially the, the, the universities uh, have not done enough research because of the lack of funding, especially in the, in the, especially in the area of archaeology uh, alone. Now, as the head of the UNESCO, do you have a special, special scheme I, I'm sure that we may have had discussions with the ministers of relevant uh, pertinent ministers and ministries uh, to uh, fund this kind of uh, any, any funding uh, to improvement of uh, training personnel on, on the archaeological, uh, especially in the, in the research uh, and development areas in this sector. Do you have any, any, any channels of funding for Sri Lanka because, uh, uh, you know, education uh, well, unfortunately, we are not. Uh, uh, we don't have such funds. We are not uh, even supposed uh, to uh, directly fund our uh, uh, archaeological research. But I think uh, what uh, we are doing, uh, and uh, what we have been doing, and what we are doing also, uh, we are catalyzing. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, support for such archaeological research. Uh, we are uh, we have uh, uh, partners. Uh, we serve as a big platform for uh, uh, such international cooperation. Uh, uh, I can mention uh, uh, the uh, University of Durham, uh, which has uh, one of the uh, best centers of uh, uh, knowledge, uh, archaeology about uh, South Asia and particularly Buddhism uh, from this point of view. Uh, we are working uh, with the University of Durham and uh, uh, particularly with uh, Professor Robin Cunningham who is uh, the leader of the team that has uh, made the new archaeological excavations here in uh, Polonarova which we visited uh, uh, and I, bought, I was with him uh, in, uh, recently in uh, Nepal in, uh, uh, in April uh, in Lumbini also, the birthplace of Lord Buddha where uh, he is leading a team of uh, a similar uh, archaeological sites. I just give one example. But uh, there are also uh, many uh, countries and partners who support uh, through funds in trust. I'm talking, of course, about Japan. I'm talking about uh, uh, Italy. There are many partners and countries that are supporting uh, uh, such activity. Of course, the lead is uh, 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 your own experts. You have uh, a lot of expertise in the country. Uh, you <coughs> have uh, um, eminent uh, professors and specialists. Uh, so it's the good, uh, I would say, match uh, between uh, uh, your uh, experts and uh, supporting more national capacity building uh, in this area. Um, and I would say that um, uh, with, uh, with ar archaeology around World Heritage Sites, we still have to be very careful. Uh, and this is a, a process that has to go uh, very well coordinated. Uh, uh, and this is precisely what is happening in Poland Aruba. So I think this is the right approach. Uh, on the other side, what I was told um, in uh, Sigiria, uh, when we were walking through the beautiful uh, water gardens and the, uh, another, I would say, uh, uh, expression, as I mentioned, of hydrological engineering, uh, ancient one, uh, the one archaeology that has been discovered is on the left side. This was the decision of the government and the experts and to leave the right side for the time being until there are probably better technologies and better knowledge on this. So, uh, of course, it's uh, the government and the national authorities uh, who decide on these issues and we can support it. A supplementary question, if I may, one, one second. Uh, in, the, in terms of education, in terms of education improvement and development in Sri Lanka, uh, how Satisfied are you, and how the UNESCO matters or standardized Sri Lanka in terms of meeting the Millennium Development Goal in terms of education? Well, in terms of reaching the Millennium Development Goals, I think Sri Lanka is, uh, has reached them. It's a big stride. So the question is not about uh, access anymore, like uh, uh, if you compare with other countries. Uh, I think this is over. Uh, what uh, Sri Lanka is uh, 
uh, struggling and, uh, and has as its uh, national, I would say, political agenda, of course, is the quality uh, of education. Uh, and I would say this is not only a problem of Sri Lanka. Everybody, all many countries, uh, even the developed countries, uh, are uh, some of them are struggling with the quality of education. It's the overall reform of the education system. It's modernizing it. It's uh, using new technologies. It's changing curricula. We're working also through our Institute of uh, uh, Education, uh, International Bureau of Education, which are specializing in curricula. Uh, when I spoke about mismatches, it's precisely about uh, looking at what type of curricula nowadays is needed. Uh, uh, it is not about uh, uh, education, uh, as we say, only. It's about creating a knowledge-based society. It's about knowledge. Uh, and this is where um, I think the overall quest of uh, all of us now uh, is to find these new ways of teaching, of learning, the outcomes. Uh, 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 with the uh, value-based education, education for global citizen, as we, uh, citizenship, uh, as we said, uh, and to change this um, traditional classical form of uh, transmission. This was what we discussed now in the uh, Asian Institute of Teaching, very interesting discussion. It's not the classical way of teaching, transmitting. It's about uh, uh, understanding, it's about engaging, uh, it's about transforming. So all these are big issues. And then not only for Sri Lanka, but here uh, I'm glad that uh, the uh, government is uh, looking at it, I would say, with sincerity uh, and responsibility. Thank you. May I ask you a question? Was an aspect of your visit pertaining to you trying to canvass Colombo's vote for your second general ship candidates in the very near future? This was not a trip linked uh, with, uh, with my candidates. It was a uh, uh, I know, some, of course, people ask me. I cannot avoid it. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is a, a trip uh, totally dedicated to uh, uh, our work with uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, I have been invited uh, several times, and uh, unfortunately, twice I had to postpone for other uh, reasons uh, beyond my control. Uh, last year, I couldn't uh, because we were so busy with the Agenda 2030. But uh, uh, now I think it's the right time because of the... Uh, uh, our work, joint work with the United Nations to see how we better inscribe UNTAF. I uh, think there is a wonderful team here of the United Nations. We met this morning, uh, working very closely to support government, and we want to be part of this, uh, of this process, and particularly uh, when it comes to uh, peace, uh, uh, reconciliation, and uh, sustainable development. In fact, it's not the first time I meet the president. I met him in Paris uh, during the COP21 climate conference, uh, we met uh, briefly, we discussed uh, some of these issues, he invited me, so I'm here. How, how optimistic are you about Sri Lanka's support, uh, your candidates? We didn't discuss this issue, as I said, it was not uh, something that uh, was meant... Uh, we don't have uh, this type of work, we don't allocate uh, budgets. Uh, we are not a bank uh, or a development bank or otherwise. Uh, we are more into uh, technical support uh, uh, for government. Uh, it is more about uh, leveraging and uh, um, catalyzing uh, funds if there is a need of fund. It is more about uh, policy advice. It is more about capacity building, uh, putting uh, our networks at work. And this is how we support uh, Sri Lanka. Oh no, though there is a support, uh, um, but it's not this type of uh, a support. Uh, as I said, we sent experts last year. It was uh, a support. It's, technical, it? it's a technical support, right? Not project support, yes. No. no. Sir. And then the gentleman in the green shirt. You mentioned gender-based violence. How bad is it? Is it really bad here in our country? Or is it is that an improvement? Or do you find any sort of reconciliation relevant to that? You know, it's a difficult uh, question. I, I don't dare say uh, past judgments uh, because I'm not. Uh, maybe our colleagues here from the United Nations, maybe Una could uh, say a little bit more. Uh, it was, and uh, let me be very clear, that um, gender-based violence, uh, unfortunately, is everywhere. And it is uh, an issue that was not that much uh, talked of, uh, even in some of the developed countries. Uh, 
who think that uh, they did not have it. Um, we um, are part of uh, the United Nations working with UN Women, but not only uh, with the uh, UNFPA and some of the other partners, UNDP, uh, in for the different, uh, different circumstances. Um, I think uh, what I heard as a problem is ragging. We did discuss this problem yesterday uh, in the University uh, of uh, Kendi and with the Minister of Higher Education and uh, he uh, told me that uh, uh, the Minister uh, the Ministry is very committed in the government uh, uh, to uh, uh, work uh, um, with the civil society, with the unions and with the others uh, in order to stop this practice. Uh, it's uh, for us from the point of view of UNESCO it is an important issue because in the last years uh, we have uh, started working uh, quite um, successfully, I would say, to identify uh, the problems and uh, give response to uh, bullying in schools, uh, something that uh, is another problem. It's very much linked uh, uh, to ragging. It's linked also to uh, uh, harassment and violence. So these are the linkages where I think uh, uh, we are committed to work with the United Nations system, with the government, of course, with the civil society, uh, and those partners who think that we can contribute to solving this problem. There's a gentleman here. Yeah. I also participated yesterday in the session with Randy. And uh, even there, there are uh, research in the university, a lot of research happening in the university. What's your observation? Are they, are they linked or are they focused with development goals of the country? And if not, uh, are there any better way UNESCO can facilitate uh, such guidance? Well, I think the, uh, the Minister of, uh, of Science and Technology uh, is, is very clear about it that, uh, um, and I, I guess also the, the, the government and the President and the Prime Minister that. Uh, uh, definitely, this is an area where there is uh, no sufficient investment. Uh, uh, there is, this is an area which has been uh, uh, neglected uh, because of the uh, conflict, because of other priorities. Uh, uh, this leads to a brain drain. This leads also to the lack of national capacity uh, to uh, tackle uh, some of the challenges. And, um, and I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's commendable that uh, there is uh, this uh, strong drive uh, on behalf of the government to invest in science, technology, and innovation, um, because this is the way we, we see the uh, uh, the future. And um, uh, linking it to with higher education is extremely important. This is where uh, uh, quality of higher education, uh, uh, quality assurance of higher education is important. Um, we did discuss issues of raking, of mutual recognition of diploma, something that uh, we work uh, uh, also in Asia and, and globally. Um, and as I, we say very often, and I, I, I call this very often, um, innovation, innovate innovation is, uh, uh, I think, the, uh, uh, the magic bullet uh, for many things nowadays. And there is talent everywhere. Uh, talent is everywhere in the world. You just have to unleash this uh, the potential of young people uh, uh, to give them this quality education and, and to innovate. So. Um, uh, nowadays, as, as I mentioned yesterday also, uh, uh, it is not just about uh, one sci scientist uh, doing something, a discovery or something, it's about the teamwork, it's about um, this critical mass of, uh, of scientists, of uh, researchers, of uh, people who uh, innovate, uh, and this uh, can be found here, I'm, I'm more than confident that uh, uh, it is here, it can be linked also with others. Um, uh, working in partnerships. Uh, University of Kenti has more than 62, I think 65 um, uh, partners, uh, other universities uh, that they work with. And I think the, uh, the dream, as the Minister of Science, Technology uh, and Innovation uh, mentioned, to create, to establish such a, a science center is precisely about this. It is about uh, encouraging uh, young people uh, to, uh, to pursue careers of scientists, uh, uh, it is about uh, liaising uh, also with the others. It is about encouraging innovation, uh, to think differently. Creativity, it's a big, uh, uh, I think, opportunity uh, here. So uh, 
um, from that point of view, I would really like to support uh, the minister and the government in, in, in the pursuit of uh, this uh, and we need some ambition. And direct support by UNESCO to uplift Sri Lanka RMD status, research and development status. Well, you know, we are, we are participating in the, uh, uh, this uh, Global uh, uh, Innovation Index. Uh, it's, um, the Global Innovation Index is an initiative that started with intellectual property organization, but uh, uh, together with some other agencies uh, and some other partners, we are working uh, also, and we established this. And uh, this is where Sri Lanka moved quite fastly, uh, recently. Uh, into uh, higher positions in this innovation index. This means that uh, the potential is here, that uh, the country is moving, and uh, uh, if there is a more focus, more investment, uh, more partnerships uh, in this area, uh, it can happen. No assistance per se by Oh, we can, uh, we can uh, uh, do a lot. In fact, we have already... Hmm? Uh, yes, technical, technical, not uh, financial, no, technical. Uh, you mean uh, uh, exclude from the uh, uh, list, uh, the World Heritage List? Yes, uh, what are the... Uh, uh, there are in the history of the in, uh, World Heritage in the Convention only two such uh, instances. Uh, uh, one was a voluntary uh, decision by a country to withdraw from the World Heritage List a natural site. It's about uh, uh, by Oman, uh, done uh, in 2011, I think. Uh, uh, and the other, uh, the same, I think the same year, uh, there was the um, decision by the World Heritage Committee to delist uh, the, uh, the lawns along the river uh, in Dresden uh, from the World Heritage List because of the uh, construction of a bridge. And it was um, um, done with the knowledge of the uh, uh, local authorities of, of Dresden uh, in Germany who knew that they will be delisted but they decided uh, to pursue. So these are the two um, cases of uh, delisting. Uh, we have of course uh, a list of properties in danger but this doesn't mean uh, that uh, once a World Heritage Site is in, a, uh, in the list of uh, endangered um, um, it should not be seen as, as a punishment or uh, I'm one of those that uh, consider that um, everything that we work uh, with the governments on the protection of the sites, whether we criticize it, we send missions, uh, uh, whether we put it, uh, or the World Heritage Committee, it's not us, the Secretariat, it's the World Heritage Committee, at the end of the day, that uh, takes uh, these decisions. It is about protecting, preserving. Uh, it is not to put some, somebody in the corner and to punish. It's about to find the best way of protect and preserve heritage. Maybe, uh, in this particular instance, it's not the state, but it's the, it's the people who are managing the site who seem to be cooperating with the state. So how do you Well, it is a responsibility of the state. I would say that we're talking about an internationally, international, legally binding document. This is what it is. It's a convention. And a state party to the convention is the state of Sri Lanka, is the government. So then how issues inside are being discussed? Of course, whether we know that there are some peculiarities is not the only case. Religious sites, uh, when they are managed by uh, uh, different uh, uh, other, I would say, frameworks, of course, represent uh, maybe a different challenge and setting. But uh, when the World Heritage Committee discusses the reports about the protection and preservation, it is the responsibility of the government. This is the ownership of the government. It's a legally binding instrument. How many times have you infringed the government of Sri Lanka to get the act to be the Dhamul Sorry, I, I didn't I'm understand. sorry, I, I would have been too fast. Have you had UNESCO given a time frame for the government in Colombo to get their act together in regard to the sustainability of the preservation of the Damula Rock Temple? Well, uh, there, uh, there was a mission uh, last year uh, that was made by ECOMOS. It depends on the way 
um, I would say this dialogue goes, but uh, you have to know that the World Heritage Committee, uh, on and every, every year there is a meeting of the World Heritage Committee, annual meetings, uh, and every year the World Heritage Committee takes up issues of conservation and protection of World Heritage Sites. So um, I think it may, it may come any time. It's not about uh, a certain uh, uh, you know, deadline. Uh, I think it may uh, next year, there may be uh, uh, some discussion about it. Uh, I, I don't know about the experts because it's within the, the experts now of ECOMOS that are working at that. Thank you. Um, do, do you want to? Uh, just, uh, Well, we, we did mention this with the Minister of Education and Culture. Is there a possibility for a delisted entity to be relisted if they subsequently conform to UNESCO guidelines? Uh, you mean excluding from the World Heritage yes, List? Yes, re included If it were. Ah, those who are excluded. Precisely. Can they be re -enlisted? Interesting question. Have a thought about it. <laughs> okay, I've got the gentleman, the gentleman in the green shirt uh, again. And then yeah. did you have a final question? Uh, we mentioned that uh, peace and reconciliation process uh, a lot. And what are the activities, plans, and ongoing you mean the reconciliation yeah. process? Well, I mentioned that our focus will be on education. Our focus will be on education for human rights, for peace, for <laughs> curricular, teacher training. Uh, I think this is uh, the core for a sustainability uh, of the process. Uh, I think also encouraging uh, the government and uh, working for the implementation of the uh, Freedom of uh, Information Act is something very important. Um, we would very much like to work more with the media here in the country. We do work, but uh, as uh, you know, we have uh, every year uh, Freedom of Expression Day, Freedom of uh, World Press Freedom Day, sorry, which is the 3rd of May, and we are celebrating it. Um, and I think media could play also an extremely important role uh, in this process, and we would like to support uh, this type of... Uh, and then uh, with the United Nations, uh, with UNDAF and everything uh, that is here, uh, I'm very happy that there is a very good, strong team, uh, uh, good uh, uh, exchange, a very cohesive uh, activity. Uh, we will be here ready to work also with the UN in any of the other areas where we may uh, be useful. So I just have one final question here. Uh, getting back to gender equality, uh, one of the feedback that they would have in relation to equality in the workplace, equality in management, and uh, sexual abuse as well in the workshop in relevant gender. Well, I, any feedback from the I don't dare, uh, as I said, because I, I don't know that well uh, the circumstance here, and these are very specific questions about. Uh, uh, harassment or the workplace. Uh, what we did discuss, um, and I think uh, uh, this is something that uh, definitely uh, we should all advocate for, I would say, uh, we, UN system and, uh, and others. Um, it's about um, more women uh, in uh, poli political positions, more women in parliament. I think it's, uh, uh, from that point of view, uh, Sri Lanka is lagging behind uh, many other countries. I heard if this is true that it's 5% only uh, in Parliament. Uh, uh, I think it is definitely do not reflect, uh, I would say, the uh, quality of, uh, of, of uh, women, of their education, because you have uh, universal access, uh, you have 99% uh, literacy, you have uh, women that are in uh, universities uh, graduating, uh, working and it does not reflect actually, uh, I believe, uh, uh, the uh, actual role of, of women and the potential uh, role that women can play uh, in society. Uh, I heard there might be some ideas about uh, quotas in uh, uh, political parties or in parliament. Uh, I think as a temporary measure this may encourage uh, more women uh, uh, to take up this responsibility. 
uh, I was told also that um, it uh, concerned not only women in um, the national level of governance, but also on local level, uh, municipalities. Uh, I think it is very important to have more women, particularly in municipalities also, because uh, there are experiences that when you have women engaged, it the, there is more social cohesion and, and solution of, uh, of local problems. So uh, this is what I think we should uh, maybe try to work with the government, with the civil society groups to uh, advocate more because it's a process, it doesn't come uh, automatic, uh, automatically. Uh, so, um, as I said, there is kind of a discrepancy in my view uh, from the position women take uh, in the country and their level of uh, education uh, and otherwise. So, uh, there are countries where you see prominent women but not that much involvement of women sufficient and here it's just the opposite. So. It has to be balanced. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time on a Wednesday evening and on a foyer. Um, I hope that we were able to address all of your questions. If we weren't, please do contact Fadil and he will um, ensure that your questions are addressed um, in writing. So thank you very much and look forward to seeing you all very soon.